Good evening, and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending January 4th, 2020. A neighborhood watch or a neighborhood association from the Fushimi Ward in Kyoto has sent a written request to Kyoto Animation regarding the site of the first studio building, which is scheduled to be, to be demolished starting this month. The association requested that the studio not build a public monument or park at the site, as the large number of visitors that such a place would bring could disrupt the tranquility of the neighborhood. They also requested that their members be allowed to participate in negotiations about how to use the site once demolition is concluded. You can imagine how busy that place would get once it becomes a public memorial. Kyoani has not yet announced any plans for the site after demolition, apart from President Hideaki Hata mentioning the thought of a memorial back in July when the fire first occurred. A representative of the studio told Japanese press, quote, we'll consider all the factors and make a decision after consulting with the bereaved families, local residents, and other related parties. So good luck to them on that. Definitely a serious subject worth a lot of discussion and thought. Moving on. A TV commercial aired this week to announce an original anime project from director Goro Taniguchi, creator of Code Geass, and writer Kazuki Nakashima of Promare Kill la Kill and Gurren Lagann. The two are collaborating with Aniplex, Aniplex to produce the new series titled Back Arrow. Nakashima will be writing the scripts for every episode himself, as well as doing series composition very unusual. Voice actor Yuki Kaji is set to star in the anime. Interesting. Tatsunoko Production announced on Wednesday that its classic Hakushon Daimao anime series is getting a new TV anime adaptation, and no, I've never heard of it either. The new TV anime is set to premiere on YTV in spring 2020. The original anime celebrated its 50th anniversary last year and ran for 52 episodes during 1969 and 1970. It inspired a spin-off spin series back in 2001 and a live action special in 2013, so apparently it's a thing. Also a thing, a television anime adaptation has been greenlit for Sega Games' Hortensia Saga smartphone RPG. Katakawa's monthly Comic Alive magazine will also serialize a manga adaptation. Leiden Films, all caps, Leiden Films, is animating the project. They previously produced a short animated video based on the game, as well as the opening movies for part three of the game. So they know it. Hortensia Saga launched on iOS and Android in 2015, and places the player in the role of a young feudal lord learning about the kingdom of Hortensia through party battles and encounters. So, looks like a pretty straightforward uh, source for anime. Last weekend's Comic Market event also brought a couple of anime adaptation announcements. Always exciting. First up, an anime adaptation is in the works for Kenoji's Cheat Kusukushi no Slow Life Isekai in Sukuro Drugstore or The Slow Life of a Cheat Pharmacist, a drugstore built in an alternate world. The heartwarming fantasy story, so they call it, follows Reiji, who suddenly gets transported to another world after becoming tired of his dead-end job and life. In this isekai, however, the main character doesn't end up with the best combat skills. Instead, he becomes skilled at medicine-making. His options become rapidly popular, so he opens a fantasy drug store and lives a slow life catering to his store clients. Interesting. Uh, Kenoji began posting the story on the Shosetsu Ninaro website in 2016. It is published in print in Hifumi Shobo's Brave Book imprint, and also inspired an online manga adaptation. Sounds fun. And a fun little twist on the isekai concept. Digital novel brand Luz, uh, or Los, who knows, announced an anime adaptation for its Maitetsu adult game at Kamaket this weekend. A promotional video at Luz's Kamaket booth revealed that the original anime, entitled Rail Romanesque, will air on Tokyo MX in 2020 as a series of five-minute shorts, and thus presumably less adult. The original 18-plus visual novel debuted in Japan in 2016, released for PlayStation in 2018, presumably all ages, under the title Maitetsu Pure Station, and it's getting a Nintendo Switch release on the 16th of this month, presumably without the adult content. 
The game was also released on Steam in 2018 by Sekai Project. So, some options for checking that out. The game takes place in an alternate reality Japan, where trains were paired up with humanoid modules called Rail Lords. Honestly, it seems surprising that it's taken this long to get a Cute Girls Who Are Also Trains series, considering previous precedents. Come on, come on, and I mean, look, look, look at that. Yeah. Uh, in the story, the main character decides to save his hometown, quote, from water pollution caused by the proliferation of factories. By chance, he reawakens Hachiroku, a recently decommissioned rail lord. Rail lord. He becomes her owner, not creepy at all, and decides to assist her in finding her, miss of, miss, her missing locomotive while attempting to save his hometown in the process. End quote. Hisayoshi Hirasawa is serving as both director and sound director at Studio Saeta with Ta Takayuki Noguchi on character design. It'll be cute. Studio Ghibli released its annual New Year's message on Wednesday and mentioned its current and upcoming projects. And this got the internet's attention because among these was a report that they are continuing work on two new films this year. Now, it was previously revealed that Hayao Miyazaki is directing the fantasy feature film How Do You Live, but details of the second new film have yet to be released. We'll have to watch for more news to find out. And to be clear, that could be a short film, it could be live-action film, who knows. The How Do You Live film was reportedly 15% finished as of October and has been in production for three years. Miyazaki began drawing storyboards for the film in 2017. Studio Ghibli's works typically have set production schedules, but they are experimenting for this film with having no established deadline. And gee, let's we can see how that well that's going. Producer Toshio Suzuki commented, quote, I'm looking forward to how that comes through in the work. End quote. Not sure if he's pleased. Along with the two new films, the New Year's message mentioned message mentioned the Nausicaa Kabuki stage play, the upcoming Ghibli Park, and quote active overseas expansion, end quote. Hmm. Meanwhile, Crunchyroll and Funimation both published rankings of fans' top anime of the decade this week. Funimation conducted a series of fan polls to determine favorite series of the decade by genre. Fans ranked My Hero Academia as the top shonen series of the decade and Fruits Basket as the top shoujo. Favorite original series of the decade was Kill la Kill, Aww. And favorite overall animation was Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. To see the whole list of categories and runners-up, check out Funimation's blog. Uh, Crunchyroll's, whoops, going back. Uh, Crunchyroll's decade ranking showed the most watched series of the decade by region of the world. That's interesting. Uh, North America's most watched anime of the decade was, unsurprisingly, Naruto Shippuden. It was also the most watched anime of the decade in Asia and in the Middle East. Black Clover was the series most watched in Europe, Africa, and Russia. In South America, the most watched anime of the decade was Dragon Ball Super. And in Australia and New Zealand, it was My Hero Academia. Crunchyroll even included rankings for Antarctica, whose most watched series of the decade was Hunter x Hunter. Apparently, that's a popular one with research scientists. Black Clover and Naruto showed up in most of the regional lists, so those are apparently popular all over the world, while series like Attack on Titan and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure only rank on top in one region each, North America for Attack on Titan and Europe for JoJo's, if you were wondering. Again, check out Crunchyroll for the whole list by region. And of course, popularity lists don't really matter, but they kind of matter, but yeah. Okay. Yep. You're reading that headline, right? Virtual idol Hatsune Miko is going to be performing at Coachella. The renowned music festival announced its lineup of performers on Friday, and it seems Japanese pop culture is continuing its spread into the mainstream consciousness. Vocaloid program Hatsune Miku and singer and Harajuku fashion model Kyaryu Pamyu Pamyu are each performing during both weekends of the festival. 
Coachella features established and upcoming musicians from across genres. The headliners of this year's festival are Rage Against the Machine, Travis Scott, and Frank Ocean. And a virtual idol. Um, and finally, if you were around the otaku internet in the 2000s, you might recognize this illustration of a goth anime girl drawn by character designer Hiro Suzuhira. In late 2018, Suzuhira herself even posted on Twitter about the number of English responses she's received about the character. Well, a year later, in December of 2019, Suzuhira was asked to, on Twitter if fans could redraw the artwork as a tribute. She agreed, and the redraw challenge became so successful, the associated hashtag trended on New Year's Eve. Hashtag Gothic Anime Angel 2020 is filled with artists' takes on the classic character in their own style, including a new version by the original creator. Cute. So, if you need an updated goth anime forum avatar for the new decade, and let's be honest, who doesn't, check that out on Twitter. That's all the news for this week. Thanks for watching.